Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Ruri McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. In Mexico, two Jesuit priests were murdered on Monday, June the 20th. Father Javier Campos and Father Joaquin Mora were murdered in the village of Terocawi in Tarahumara. The news of their murders was announced by the provincial of Mexico, Father Luis Gerardo Moro Madrid. According to Father Madrid, the two priests were murdered while trying to protect a man from an armed assailant. The man had sought refuge in the church while being pursued. In a statement, the provincial of Mexico expressed deep sorrow and a sense of anguish. He said that their deaths happened in the context of the violence that Mexico is experiencing. May they rest in peace. Thousands of Catholic believers took part in the annual Walk with Christ Eucharistic procession in Sydney, Australia on Sunday, June the 19th. It was led by Archbishop Anthony Fisher and it passed through the city centre. The procession is an annual tradition held on the solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, in which thousands bear witness to Jesus present in the Holy Eucharist. In a Facebook post, Archbishop Fisher expressed joy in seeing over 13,000 faithful attend the procession. He said, It was indeed a blessing to be back together to celebrate our faith in such a tribute of love and public witness. Due to COVID restrictions, the event could not be held in the last two years. In Japan, a district court has ruled that gay marriage is unconstitutional. In its verdict, the court in Osaka said that as per the Japanese constitution, marriage constitutes the union of a man and a woman. The verdict follows a lawsuit filed by three same-sex couples who argued that the prohibition on same-sex marriages was against the constitution. The couples cited Article 14 of the constitution that pertains to the equality of all people and the right to non-discrimination in political relations. In the verdict, the court cited Article 24, which refers directly to marriage. It says that marriage is based solely on the mutual consent of both sexes, that is, man and woman. The court also dismissed the plaintiff's demand for damages of 1 million yen each, which is around 7,500 US dollars. In the United States, the Supreme Court has repealed a law in the state of Maine that prohibited it from allotting public funds to schools having programs that are inspired by religious norms. Six of the nine justices in the panel supported the move to repeal the law. More than half of the state's cities do not have public schools. As the law mandates all urban centres to provide education to children, municipalities entered into a contract with a nearby public school. The city authorities also pay the tuition directly at a private school, but the repealed law stated that taxpayer money could not go to religious schools. The Supreme Court ruled that the state law on funding for such schools is a violation of the right to education. Attacks on pro-life centres across the United States are continuing amid anticipation that the Supreme Court could overturn Roe v. Wade, which legalised abortion in the country. In the latest incidents, a pro-life pregnancy centre in Michigan and the office of an anti-abortion organisation in Minnesota were vandalised. The Lennon Pregnancy Centre in Dearborn Heights in Michigan was vandalised during the weekend. Twelve of its front windows and four glass doors were smashed. Pro-choice graffiti was also sprayed on its outer walls. In Minnesota, the Minnesota Citizens Concern for Life, or MCCL, office building was damaged during the evening and early morning of June the 14th and 15th. Red graffiti that read, Abortion is Liberation, was also spread on the building. In the past two months, the building has been vandalised twice. Pro-life centres have been attacked in several states after the May the 2nd leak of a draft opinion of the Supreme Court justices in a case called Dobbs v. Jackson. In the document, the justices indicated that they would uphold the constitutionality of Mississippi's Gestational Act, paving the way for repealing Roe v. Wade. More than 130 people have been massacred by Islamist insurgents in Mali. The attacks took place in the middle of the country during the weekend. According to local officials, armed men unleashed mayhem in Diala Sagu and two neighbouring towns in Banka Circle, which has been the epicentre of violence in the region. The attackers killed civilians, burnt houses and stole livestock. Local media quoted an official from Bankas as saying the death toll could be much higher. The government has blamed insurgents linked to Al-Qaeda for the killings. On Monday, the government blamed Fulani preacher Amadou Kufa's Masina Katiba outfit for carrying out the attacks. Central Mali has been plagued by violence since this organisation surfaced in 2015. 
In the US state of Louisiana, Governor John Bell Edwards has signed a bill that would impose penalties on abortion providers should the Supreme Court repeal Roe v. Wade. The new measures will fortify the trigger law of the state. It will effectively ban abortions if the Supreme Court reverses the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling that legalised the termination of pregnancy in the United States. As per the new legislation, abortion providers can be penalised with imprisonment of 1 to 10 years and a fine ranging from 10,000 to 100,000 US dollars. Previously, the penalty was a jail sentence ranging from 1 to 5 years and a fine of 5,000 to 10,000 dollars. However, the law does not impose penalties on pregnant women and there are exceptions for medical emergencies. No exemption is granted in cases of rape and incest. In Scotland, a Christian believer working in a chicken wholesale company was awarded the equivalent of US$26,000 last week as compensation for being fired as a result of religious discrimination. Employment Judge Louise Cowan ordered the Two Sisters Food Group to pay the compensation to Yevgenis Kovalkovs, who was fired for refusing to take off a chain with a cross that was gifted to him by his mother. The judge said his religion and the wearing of the necklace were of deep and profound meaning to him. A member of the Russian Orthodox Church, Mr Kovalkovs was working as a quality inspector in the company in Kuperangis when his supervisor told him to remove the chain with the cross. Mr Kovalkovs went to court and in the tribunal hearing he said that the supervisor said the chain posed a hazard at the workplace. In that firm, religious jewellery is allowed after a risk assessment. However, it was never carried out by Mr Kovalkov's supervisor. Catholic agencies in Bangladesh are at the forefront in helping thousands of flood victims. Last week, heavy rain triggered floods in Silhet and other districts in northeastern Bangladesh. This is the second time in a month this region has been affected by floods. More than 200,000 people have sought shelter in 500 camps and at least 1 million people are still stranded. Local units of pontifical aid charity Caritas are distributing food, drinking water and medicines to the affected masses. Churches have also appealed to believers to generously support the relief efforts. Similarly, the state of Assam in neighbouring India is also reeling from floods. Almost 4.7 million people have been affected and 2.3 million are in temporary shelters. Archbishop John Mulachira of Guwahati said that the church is at the vanguard of relief efforts. He also appealed to everyone to extend all possible humanitarian help to those affected. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And remember, you can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.